brand new ships for the first time in five years. Even more alien stuff, including their secret pleasure dungeons. Big changes to existing feature known as power play and brand new gameplay feature that may or may not, but most likely may be base building. Coming in 2024. After console version's death, VR version's death, stagnant gameplay and ever isolating end game alien gameplay, the dead horse Elite Dangerous seems to have gotten injected with a horse happy juice for the 2024. Ketamine! So, is it the right time to pick up Elite? Is it even worth it? Or does it have long to live? Or are we smelling the last gasping rigor mortis bowel movements? So, come with me and see. Oh, and bring a gas mask. Right then, let's start off with the dead horse where we left it last year. Twitching and spazzing, half rotten in a ditch. After the ominous alien motherships that titans arrived, you'd think that there would be new gameplay, even if it was prohibitively end game. Sadly, like watching a clown shove a glass jar up his ass, the inevitable shattering glass and anal hemorrhage turned from a spectacle that was the exploded alien base into a casual Sunday on Live League, meaning more worthless grind with no added variety or real gameplay. And just as I was making the video, well, they released the update 18, and now you apparently can quote unquote kill the Titan. Uh, even though nothing happens except for an EMP, and then it's reset. Yay! Just like all other Frontier developed gameplay updates, Cock and Ball Torture is the name, and waiting is the game. Meaning that they can't release anything, even simple information, right away and it'd be fully fleshed out, or hell, even full gameplay. They think that blueballing is how marketing works. And sure, that might be true if the product was actually any good. But wait, you may say, there are new Targoids, the Glaive and Sight, a reskinned Murder Flowers uh, with maybe one new moveset. Okay, uh, but wait, you may say, there are the new Targoid Armstrong moments. Uh, that's the reskin human skimmer drones with aimbotting laser. Uh, okay, but wait, you may say, there is the new Targoid planetary site that does nothing like the last one. Uh, okay. Yeah, you might even notice a pattern or two here. It's all Targoid gameplay, and most of it is kind of reskinned. Locked out gameplay that requires special unlocked modules that only are good for this type of gameplay and nothing else. Yeah, you might see a problem here. And this is not helped by the decreasing player numbers still. I wonder why. Safe to say, up until now, it's been trying times. The console version is, for all intentions and purposes, abandoned. The VR version has been abandoned for years. Odyssey performance is still below advertised performance, and yes, I can prove it. And all the while, playing with those two malformed tumors growing straight out of your ass, known as FPS gameplay, hasn't changed a single bit. And like Frontier's PR department, is just as useless. And to pile even more onto this sad wagon of sadness, last year one of the biggest and beloved third-party tools, Elite Database, also shut down. And you know, come to think of it, I thought that I was supposed to be the king shit bottom feeder of Elite community, well, according to Care Bears and Forum Dads, but Frontier's own stock hasn't been so low since even before Elite Dangerous was released. So, what the fuck? However, as much as I like to smack the dead horse with vicious glee, in recent times the announcements have risen an eyebrow, or two, for the game and its near future, which is kinda why it might just be worth taking a look at Elite Dangerous once more. First off, the jingling keys for the naive. The new ships, yes, that's right. Finally, after five years of silence, Elite Dangerous finally is getting a new ship. And not just one, but whole four new ones. One of which is revealed to be Python 2. And while we know nothing about the specs, the role, or what it will do, all we got is this space JPEG. For some people, that's enough to cream their pants and sell their homes to acquire it. So. I guess that's good enough. On other news, Elite Dangerous is celebrating 10 years this year, so if for no other reason, it's at least worth loading up the game and taking your trusty cum wagon for a spin to mark the occasion. 
And luckily, that's not the only thing this year. Finally, after several delays, developers are finally willing to reveal what that one key feature that was supposed to come out, oh, last year, basically, is, and that's power play. Yeah, goddammit. Okay, okay, fine, I'm interested to see what changed, but in my heart I can't but to feel disappointed that it was not the base game rebalance, or better yet, engineering rework, both of which would have had much larger impact on the game. But okay, okay, I'm willing to see what they do with our political cam whore assling the wall, hmm? And finally, aside from the Titan mothership killing, there is supposed to be one more big feature coming that once more developers are not willing to talk about, but for the longest time, with good sources, we're kinda expecting base building to join Elite Dangerous sometime at the end of the year. But what it will entail and how it will work is still yet to be known. So then, the question still remains, is Elite Dangerous worth picking up? Well, it is the quintessential space sim. Spaceship combat is very nice and depthful even today. Yes, it's unbalanced, but the core mechanics are very, very solid. I'd even argue that it is the most refined space combat gameplay to date, even now, nearly 10 years after the initial release of the game. Then there's of course the good old cargo trading, and though yes we've lost one of the best community tools in the last year, when it comes to spaceship trading, there might only be two or three other space games that beat this one. Uh, one is X4, and the other one is EVE Online. So again, even for a simple space trucking, LE has always been a paragon. And as for exploration, the third newest space sim gameplay discipline that's been established thanks to Elite Dangerous itself, well, it's simple, yet appropriate. While space-like exploration is uh, limping along, overall feeling of exploring new horizons is a bit more tame than No Man's Sky, and yet it also is more meaningful and a lot more well-rounded off, especially in space, where no other game even comes close to functionality and mechanics. And that's kind of the thing, there's not just the core gameplay available, but the variations on them as well. For combat, it might be assassination of a single target, or bounty hunting just some random ships, or a big faction brawl, and even alien boss battle raids that genuinely take a lot of skill to beat. For trading, there's the freedom to go literally to any station and buy the stuff for cheap and sell it anywhere you like for profit, or if you want more organized stuff, you can go for mission-based cargo deliveries like Euro Truck Simulator. As part of trading gameplay sphere of influence, there's also the fully-fledged mining gameplay with several variations of tools, and it is one of the better mining mini-games or gameplay types I've seen in any of the space games out there. And yes, I see you there in the comments, Star Citizen fans, yes, you do have pretty good mining, but it's not flushed out quite yet, but it's on the right path. But anyways, back to Elite Dangerous. There is also a piracy that combines combat and trading, though it's not that useful and cumbersome, but still, hey, there is that. Even passenger sightseeing missions as part of exploration-based missions exist. So when it comes to the gameplay variety, there is definitely a fleshed out variations of all of them. Sure, some are lesser than others, uh, hence piracy, but regardless. And hell, even if I mentioned VR being abandoned, it still works, and it works extremely well. It's just that developers haven't updated it since, well, not counting Odyssey, literally since Horizons. That's why it's abandoned. But it still works just as fine. And it's a testament of original developers who created it. But seriously, if you've never played Elite Dangerous with or without VR, I'd say you're doing yourself a disservice. Because Elite, it is one of the most and truly immersive games out there. And it's the true immersive feeling, not the Ubisoft immersive. It actually is a feeling that you're there piloting the ship, managing its systems and interacting with the world using the ship's systems. It truly is that unique experience that literally no other space game out there, well, maybe except for Star Citizen in kind of a way, has managed to match. But the point being, if you noticed, despite the last 3 to 5 years of Elite Dangerous just stumbling around, like it just butt chugged a beer keg of absinthe and snorting down the bag of LSD, the core gameplay and the original game balance that was set for the game back in 2014 on the launch is still the main draw point for the game. 
See, the reason many of us are returning certainly is not the fucking space slugs with the horrible pedestrian grind-filled gameplay, or even engineering as overpowered and unbalanced game ruining it is, nor is it the alien threat, but the experience that draws you in with the dead, yet the surface level simplicity. Well, as simple as it could be for a sim -like game. The experience of actually piloting a spaceship is what draws you in. You see, what pissed me off even today and over the years has been the squandering of the potential. Yes, engineering is a pretty cool idea, but oh boy is it untested and unbalanced and nobody seems to have taken the time to realize what it will do to the whole game. Yes, the squadrons aka guilds slash clans are highly needed for the game, but again, Nobody gives a fuck, just plop out a feature and just forget about it. Yes, the Targoid battles are super cool, hard, but fair. But then they're gated off the main game through the pointless grind to get the weapons and parts just to get started. And yes, Powerplay Remake is a decent idea, but there are far more important things that need changing. So, if you've never tried Elite before, today the base game is rather cheap and even if you don't intend to spend over 10 hours farting about in a sidewinder, the core experience of Elite Dangerous still stands the test of time. And even the test of developer incompetence. And that's kind of the thing that I keep on harping about when I talk about Elite Dangerous in a positive manner. The base experience of just piloting a spaceship is utterworldly. And it's certainly not the case of, well, that's the best this genre has for the moment, so until something better comes, <coughs> you know, Star Citizen and whatnot else, it'll be beat. No. Elite Dangerous, back in 2014, already was far ahead many so-called immersive games, even VR games without having VR at the time. That's how impactful and that's how well-designed the basic experience of Elite is. And that alone is worth, hell, even playing around for five hours. Just don't blame me when you spend the next hundred hours grinding away for credits and next thousand hours grinding materials for engineering upgrades. So be warned, Elite in time became excessively grindy. And this is where most of the faults keep coming from, or at least are the symptoms of them. Also, on a bittersweet note, Elite is a live service game, meaning it's always online, even when playing solo. It will also one day die without being able to be played again, and knowing that this is uh, the game's 10 year, the time it has left, well, hopefully it's not that short, but, um, well, looking at the current company's state, uh, well, it's not looking good. And speaking of, Frontier, the parent company, has had massive layoffs in recent months. Even spotting some higher-up developers on Twitter announced that departures have been a sad sight. Frontier's publishing arm getting closed down in recent months, their last three games releasing bombed harder than religious idiots in Europe, and the outlook for any of their games is not good at all. Even the three main games that keep the company afloat, Planet Coaster, Elite Dangerous, and Planet Zoo in ascending order. Well, they're afloat, and that's kind of the best I can say. Generally, the mood, despite the attempts to appear better than ever in their unlocked stream thing they did a little while back, is, well, simply not good. Yes, Elite got its ass full of injection of ketamine from the new so-called content, but I sadly have to remind you. That new feature rework that is coming this year, you know, the power play? Well, that was announced a long time ago and was supposed to be delivered at the end of last year. Then there's the new secret feature, which is most likely the base building, is a cut feature from Odyssey launch. And the Targoid mothership, well, that too is part of Odyssey. And the new ships? Well, okay, yeah, they, those might be actually new. Everything important coming out in 2024 is the leftovers from either the Odyssey release or its planned post-release support, which in a perfect world should have come out in one year's time. Meaning that in perfect world, if Odyssey didn't bomb or whatnot else happened, all of this content should have come out at the end of 2022. But, as I stated, incompetence got in the way and skipped two years later, and here we are still waiting for on-foot Targoids and not just reskinned human drones. So then, like the diseased hobo on the street asking for a crack cocaine and offering questionable quality blowjobs, should you give Ellie Dangerous a chance or come back? 
Well, like I said before, the core gameplay, the pillars upon which this experience of literally flying a spaceship with intricate detail in both visuals and mechanics still is there. You can still have the unparalleled combat with refined mechanics. Trading is just as fantastic in this massive play space, offering near countless ways of getting rich while transporting slaves and hardcore pornography. Or if you hate humanity, you can just fuck off to the 400 plus billion stars out there that barely only 1% have been explored by a player. Or maybe even don your privileged goggles and grab your overpriced brutalist dildo sticks and pretend you're a real spaceman in a spacey ship. Yeah, it's great. So the answer is yes, Elite is absolutely worth even if you just pick it up and have fun for a few days experiencing that spaceman's adventure. But taking it seriously is simply impossible and really not recommended. There's just far too much grinding that completely gates off anyone that even is mildly interested in any kind of modicum of uh, deep gameplay. All the while, the new content that comes out predominantly is targeting the few leftover hardcore masturbinators, those that keep grinding away. So yes, get a lead dangerous, return to the game and play it for a little while. It's still got the same space sim charm, with exceptional immersion. Or pop your head in from the burrows like the gopher at least once in a while when the new stuff comes out. But I guess don't take it too seriously or you'll find yourself grinding your time away and indulging in very, very bad game design. But as for what happens after those features announced for 2024 are released, does Frontier have anything left over from Odyssey to bring out? Well, come to think of it, there might be an SRV or two at most, but my answer is no. And sadly, this is where I assume hardcore maintenance phase will start setting in. So, in the end, let's just raise a glass to exceptional space game experience that the original developers created. You made a legendary game, so thank you. And for as long as LLE Dangerous lives, or Frontier allows it to live, it is worth at least picking up from time to time. And all that because of you, because of your original efforts. And there you go, that's about it from me this time, and if you, hey, enjoyed my colorful uh, description of uh, many things here, of course do check out the Patreon and support, or join the YouTube members, or hell, maybe pick up a t-shirt from the merch store. And that aside, I'll be picking up Elite Dangerous from time to time, I'll keep an eye on it, of course, and uh, so should you. So for now, I bid you adieu.